Welcome to the Welsh Yogi Podcast. <laughs> okay, welcome to the Welsh Yogi Podcast. Myself, Kopal, Ben, Charlie. We also have Anna and Abby in the studio audience also. And this is episode number 21, yeah. right? Um, those of you who have listened to the podcast so far, you know we're going through Sri Shapanishad. And those of you, this this might be your first podcast. Welcome. And I don't think they need to listen to the others, do they? You can just you can slip in pretty much any time. Yeah. But you're giving a talk tonight, aren't you? We're yeah. in the Atma Lounge at the minute. And tonight... Ben here is given a workshop titled "Attention, Paying Attention to Intention. Yeah. But you're nervous, aren't you? I'm not so much... So much oh, no. <laughs> I'm not so much nervous as I am clueless. Because you've given this but you've given this workshop before and it got very good yeah, six results. Six months ago. Six months ago, yeah, for a course. Yeah. I, yeah, think but, I think you'll do well. Yeah, I don't know if anyone's ever tried to say words before. Yeah. Like sometimes when you say words, there's no there's no words there to say. And you have a heavy desire to say something, but there's nothing. Oh uh, no. There's no formulation of anything. So I've been out the whole day on the, on the streets and the same thing's been happening. Just write as block but with my mouth. Right. So <laughs> it's going to go well tonight. Yeah. Anyway, if you want to come for the talk, <laughs> then uh, book on, on on our social media. He's also given the same talk on Friday. Today's Wednesday. When will this podcast be released, though? Probably two weeks. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, that was a good talk, Ben, last week, wasn't it? Thank you. Okay. Should we read Shishapanishad, then? Yeah. Shishapanishad, ancient yoga text. Um, I gave one of these to Al Price, who's um, a long-time listener. He's a oh, friend yeah. of a Chutatma and Tarakanaths. Nice. Shout out I gave one points. of these. Sorry, go on. No. I gave one of these to Newton Faulkner. <laughs> Did you know, a musician? Actually? Yeah, I gave him a Shri Shapanishad, yeah. Really? Yeah. Yeah, he was into it. Me and him are like, we're like best friends. And Joe Pasquale as well. You Joe gave... Pasquale, Christopher Biggins. You've given... I remember... Bit books to Christopher Biggins, John and Edward, or Jedward. Jed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Me and one of the boys, Vamshi was in uh, Bath. <laughs> <laughs> we were in Bath once and Christopher Biggins just walked through Yeah, and I was like oh Vamsi look it's Christopher Christopher Biggins whatever his name is Christopher Biggins and Vamsi was just like who on earth is Christopher Biggins and he was like stood right next to Christopher Biggins and uh, oh, Biggins was just laughing he was just like look at this guy he doesn't know who I am <laughs> and he's not that famous is he yeah. he's not uh, it's quite funny though like Jedward I mean John and Edward right I Drop the loads of names. Do you know that the Prime Minister also gave us a shout out for our Food for Life project? Boris Johnson, yeah. Boris Johnson. My mum hates Boris Johnson. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, he's... I, speak, I was speaking to her today about it. Yeah. It's dividing, isn't it, politics? I don't get into... I don't pick a... I don't get into politics no. on podcasts. <laughs> on podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> As a general rule. Yeah, it's fair enough. Like, it's a... I'm not really interested either way. Do you want to read it? Are we, so we're reading chapter 12, mantra 12, sorry. Right there. Mantra 12. Is it? Yeah. Okay. If you're still with us so far, you're doing well. This is mantra 12. It's a different pace today, the podcast. Yeah. Usually I feel like we're a little bit more... Together. ...sharpened on it. Yeah. But actually at the moment we're on a, we're on a bit of a marathon effort, aren't we? Yeah, we're going out every day, distributing yeah. books. Yeah, it's a tiring, tiring job. Me and a lot of nice people. Yeah. It's it's so nice to actually go and connect with people, especially mm. everyone's been het up in their house, penned up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And like um just to see them. It's wonderful. All right, and Mantra Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really looking forward to this talk tonight. Like. <laughs> right, so, so the Mantra Twelve is Sanskrit. Han. Andam tamaha prefishanti, ye sampu dam upasate, tatu buyata ive te tamo, ye ru, ya u sampu yam rataha. So here, this is Sanskrit 
um, mantras from Sri Shapanishad. So here it's saying, Andam Tamaha Pravishanti. So Andam Tamaha Pravishanti. So that means enter into darkness. Ye Sambutim Upasate. Ye those who Asambutim. So in the purport, Sri Prabhupada describes this word of Asambutim. He says, refers to those who have no independent existence. So it means like just normal people, I guess, sort of thing. You know, people other than the, I guess, what is it? Supreme. Asambutim. Sa- yeah, Asambutim. So Asam must mean not uh, complete sort of thing. Butam means like living entities. So not complete living entities. Yeah, I guess so. No, it, like not, not, um, because here it says Sambuti means the absolute, um, yeah. absolute supreme, absolute truth, absolute okay, personality. Okay, okay, okay. So this is, this is actually, Krishna. this is referring to like powerful beings that aren't Krishna, right? Powerful beings that aren't Krishna or even just beings that aren't Krishna. Is it? Yeah, like those, those who, because it says they enter into, as a boot, so upasati worship. Like so I they, used to worship Axel Rose, Freddie Mercury, Stone Cold Steve Austin. Really? I used to really be into my WWE wrestling. I had a duvet, I had a duvet, and like a Stone Cold Steve Austin duvet. Nice. So like on the duvet, it was like Stone Cold, and then I had like a Stone Cold pillow. And, and your, your head would be, so you'd have his body? Next to his face, like, yeah. Nice, that's cute. Um, and then, yeah, anyway. So yeah, worship of yeah. normal living entities. So I used to worship on. Ozzy Osbourne. Do you? A little bit. When I was in my dark period, uh, who mm. else? Joe Rogan. I was proper into Joe Rogan. Mm. He was the center of my world. Don't know who else. Mm. Now I worship you, Gopal. Yeah, well, everyone worships something, sort of thing. But, you know, but I guess, so here it's saying, Tato Buya Ivate Tamo. Then that, still more. Those like that, still more. Ya U Sambutyam Rataha. Also, in the absolute engaged. So the way it's translated, those who are engaged in the worship of demigods enter into the darkest regions and still more to the worshippers of the impersonal absolute. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Remember what I was saying about my mind being empty? Yeah. When I'm reading this, my mind's empty. Well, the purport Shri Prabhupada talks about the, um, how you can't just work. You have basically that love is meant for the supreme mm. sort of thing. Like I, I mentioned this before, but it was an interesting point how um, everyone has a loving propensity. Mm. Mm. I hear it like, I heard that ladies generally admit it more easier than men sort of thing, but actually we we do. We have a propensity to love something or someone and we're looking for something to sort of give our affection to. Like if generally if someone even lives on their own, they like to get a pet or something, you know, they want to feel that that reciprocation. So spiritual life and yoga is the art of what to direct your loving propensity to. Yeah. So I think, so here this, this Ishupanishad is saying, well, if you, if you pick, if you pick things other than the, other than Krishna, other than the source of everything, then your loving propensity won't, you know, it doesn't get satisfied. Yeah. I Just, heard, you, you heard of Vidyapati? No. Vidyapati. He's a, he's a, a famous Vaishnav sort of Sanskrit poet. Oh yeah, um, Vidyapati, and he he talks about you know, how you? yeah I, I study quite a lot of sort of higher poetry, um, and Vidyapati no he talks about how like um, the the heart of of the living beings in this world is like a scorched desert, you know we all want to be loved we all we're all trying our hardest to 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 find something to love, but because we're channeling that that loving propensity in the wrong direction our heart mm. becomes like a scorched desert. In other words, we want the, the sort of quenching of, of, the, of, of water. Mm. Yeah? Like we, want, 
we want to quench our, our thirst to be loved, but we're looking in the wrong places. So, so many people are searching. They're, they're maybe they're trying to go and buy nice clothes on the high street so that they can dress a certain way so people will love them. Mm. Or maybe they're trying to get love out of sort of relationships which are temporary, like mm -hmm. quick relationships, or even even like a lot of like family relationships. They're, they're never permanent, like um, a relationship with the Supreme, you know? Mm. So the idea is that like, these are like little drops of water. In a desert. In, in a desert. So like, um, you're never going to get quenched. And in one way, it makes you more frustrated, you know? Mm. And it's, so we're, like I, I, me personally, like recently I've been feeling like a lot of kind of lonely feelings mm -hmm. because you have like thoughts, like, I don't know if other people think like, you know, all of our relationships that we have for the most part, they're going to come to an end at some point. Mm hmm even even in like our circles like a, like in a spiritual practicing circle like um already some friends have moved out of the ashram and moved away like and you know these relationships there's a temporary aspect to them mm -hmm. and if you're not if you're not connecting to that cuz vidyapati then goes on to say that when when we when we sort of connect to to krishna mm. and when we form our relationship with krishna it's like a flood an ocean mm. that completely quenches that that burning thirst that we have to love and be loved mm. you know so like um and if you're not con connecting properly to that then it can leave you feeling lonely mm. parched even in a place even in an ashram environment mm. where we are trying to form that connection do you know what i mean yeah so like if you if we're if we're worshiping like in the verse it says we're worshiping demigods or we're worshiping like that we're we're never going to get that thirst quenched we're gonna en we're gonna enter. It says the darkest regions of ignorance, but you know tamaha, tamaha. It's, mm. it's like this. Um, like we might have, if we look back on, like I can look back on my life, and there's been times in my life where I have been darkest regions, darkest regions of ignorance. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, same for sure. But you definitely need these loving relationships. Mm. I mean, that's one of the wonderful things that I found coming into the like a community of bhakti yogis is wonderful loving relationships you know that at first i didn't appreciate mm. you know like um especially as like a, a young male they say like every man's an island you know i've got you know so more it was more like i got my sort of spiritual practices or my life mm. and my goals and then there's other people and i they're the people who i just sort of do things with yeah. but i've got my goals and you know that they might they're sort of there to, I got to do it with them or if they have the same goals or, yeah, yeah. or I just live with them sort of thing. But then after a while, you sort of realize, no, actually, I, we need each other. Yeah. And looking back on my personal sort of spiritual journey, the most valuable things I have now are actually those relationships mm. with my friends and the other, the devotees sort of thing. How do you like, because um, like, like this thought of how these relationships they're temporary how do you like reconcile that are they temporary in, in a spiritual material relationships are temporary mm. because if you have a relationship materially then that's you know that that's going to finish like you know I, I meet some people sometimes who I remember one one boy you know that he was saying that um, um, you know, he didn't believe in the soul and we're just you know chemicals and and I said, okay, well, what's... And sitting next to him was his girlfriend. I said, what does, you, what does your girlfriend think about that, you know? So that, well, you're just a hunk of chemicals and she's just a hunk of chemicals and you just sort of come together by, like, you know, just some, you know, cosmic chain reaction from, from the start. Excuse me. That's the sound of the cosmic reaction. Yeah. <laughs> so I turned my phone off, like... But so, so deep down, like, she was like, oh, no, I'm not just a... You know, I'm a person. Mm. So if, if relationships are so superficial, then they're bound to finish because what you're what you got a relationship with is this other person's body. Mm. You don't know them as the soul. You don't believe in them as the soul. So when they when they're dead, it's like, oh, they're gone, they're gone. But who's gone? Mm. You know the 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 the, the, th the elements that you were interacting with before are still there, mm. but there's some, there's something missing. So I remember I, I spoke to my spiritual master and I said, 
well, I'm very much attached to the people I'm around now and practicing spiritual life with. And I've, you know, developed some love and affection for them. And, and you, is it, so I would like that to continue eternally. I don't really want to be broken up from this spiritual family sort of thing. And he seemed to indicate that, you know, these spiritual relationships, they continue even past sort of the material tabernacle, so to speak. So spirit relationships on the spiritual platform there, they're much more wonderful because they've got, as, as the book's saying, they've got, they got Krishna at the center. So therefore you have love for all living beings, mm. not just some and not others. But it is, um, it is an interesting thought, you know. Yeah, it's deep, deep relationships. Yeah. But, you know, to have relationships with someone, you've got to know who they are and you've got to know who you are. You've got to have self-realization mm. sort of thing. Ultimately, we need to establish, that's what the whole verse is about, we need to establish a relationship with Krishna, with the source of everything. That's God. Yeah. Because that's where it all comes from. You know, like to give the example, like if you have a meal, if your hand just tries to enjoy it by itself, it doesn't get much satisfaction. It no. needs to get the food, give to the mouth, that goes to the stomach, and then one gets nutrition on the whole body. Mm. So similarly, you have to, we have to connect to our source, the source of our feelings of love and our desire for loving relationships and establish that. And then when you click in that yoga, back to yoga sort of relationship, then life becomes very, very uplifting. Like we were reading that book, Wise Love, and the um, author was using the saying that those who practice a type of mindfulness, they only go, you only go so far and you don't get really satisfied unless you put your emotions in it. Yeah. You have to put your emotions in the meditation, in the yoga, in order to get real sort of really what you're looking for. So the art of bhakti yoga and connecting to Krishna and other living beings on a spiritual platform is that real heart deep yeah. yoga and lifestyle that I think people are looking That's for. a really important point actually because like, if people are listening, if they've tried some mantra meditation, hmm. where we chant like Hare Krishna mantra on beads and stuff, um, you find that when you are really putting, because I've, like I said, I had these like sort of feelings of loneliness. When you really feel that whilst you're chanting, hmm. you can start to feel that connection a lot more to these holy names, you know? Yeah. And I, I encourage like, you know, when people are suffering, really struggling, that's the hmm. time to pick up the beads and have a chant, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, you're th you're there in those. Do you know? Mm. I don't know if that's good advice. Or and it, it's very interesting because this, because as the verse is saying, this what was that word for the chat that Adi was it? Yeah. Um, Asambuta. Asambuta. So the fact that we feel lonely mm. is evidence that we are Asambuta. Mm. If you were complete, if you were God, as some people say, we're all God, yeah. then where where do you get this feeling of incompleteness and loneliness from? So it's quite good, especially when chanting and for spiritual life, when you feel, because fe loneliness means you feel a gap. Yeah, yeah. You feel like you, you hanker after some, some relationship, you hank which means like to be loved. Yeah. Um, and other, you know, because we are, so we're incomplete. So other incomplete people can't really complete us. Yeah. We can only be completed by the complete mm. as, as the first Verse in the Ishapanishad says, Om Pranam 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 Adachate Punasya Pranam Adaya Pranam Ivava Shishate. He's Pranam. He's the Krishna is complete. Therefore, we can only feel complete in connection with the complete. Mm -hmm. Any, as Prabhupada says in the Prabhupada, any feelings of incompleteness are due to incomplete knowledge of the complete whole. Yeah. Am I making any sense? Completely. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's interesting because, like, Going back to when I said I was worshiping Ozzy Osbourne, you know, yeah. back in the day when I before I found any of this Krishna conscious philosophy, none of that, I used to listen to a bit of Black Sabbath. Mm. I got a Black Sabbath tattoo on my leg, which is a bit stupid, but I yeah. haven't seen that before. It's, you haven't seen it? It's a no. bleeding cross. Oh, is that their logo or something? Uh, no, it's just a bleeding cross that says Black Sabbath. Oh, it says Black Sabbath. Um, but <clears throat> basically, Ozzy Osbourne's there's a line in a in a song which like 
struck me and it just says this world is a lonely place and you're on your own <laughs> but but like that that line if you've got that that philosophy that world perspective where you you can't see krishna you can't see like a connection to the supreme if you in other words if you see this world with a material vision then the world is a lonely place and you are on your own do you know what I mean? Because mm. you see things according to your consciousness, isn't it? Yeah. Krishna reveals himself relative to your level of surrender. What was that verse? As though surrendering to me. Yeah, yeah, So as though surrendered to me, I reward them accordingly. So if you're not surrendered, if you're not sort of surrendered to the idea even of Krishna, then he's not revealed. He's You can't be seen by anyone, you know? So to Ozzy Osbourne, who's got quite like a dark kind of uh philosophy i think no he's a he's, he's a, bit a christian, christian isn't he? yeah he's he's he's, 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 he's christian playing or catholic something like that he's got a lot of religious themes in his songs like win or lose is up to you heaven or hell like he's he talks about this kind of like that's why i was into him because he's quite like mm. he's deep he took a lot of like psychedelics and stuff like that you know like he still does probably doesn't smoking he? and tripping but... is all that i do <laughs> It's like all of that stuff. Anyway, but um, yeah, I guess if you've got that materialistic perspective, the world is lonely because mm. it's temporary and your relationships are temporary. Mm. I don't know if that's dark or what. It's a bit dark, but it's all the more reason to... Go it is, to yeah. It's depressing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. But that's, that's, that's all the more reason to connect to that, that lightness that is connection with with that divine that spiritual energy mm. that that and form that relationship with th the personal godhead you know it's yeah. a person it's not like a because even in this verse it talks about those who meditate on this impersonal light because there's there's an aspect of light which is impersonal they call it like the brahma yota isn't it yeah. so there's a there's a level of realization of god which it's not darkness like the material world is con compared to ignorance it's not devoid of knowledge it is light but it's not personal light, it's impersonal light, you know? It's, mm. it's, it's, it's knowledge, isn't it? It's, 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 what's the word for knowledge? Vidya. Vidya, chit. So oh, sh chit shakti. Chit shakti, yeah. So there's knowledge there, but it's not personal. Mm. So it's not like a reciprocal, it's like a, a, almost like a voidy kind of. Yeah. So like this is saying, they're, they're destined for even worse places. <laughs> because <laughs> they're because they're just like losing their personality altogether like we, like we said in a previous podcast mm. vidya uh, no was it navarna like you're out of the forest but then where are you mm. like they're in navarna varna means forest yeah i was listening to a a lecture this this morning by Srila Prabhupada, who, who um writes a commentary and translates this uh wisdom literature from india sort of thing and uh, he was quoting this verse. Annabella says he does some yum. He said you should have no, no material desires. Mm. You know, Annabella says he does some yum. Gyani, kamardi, and avritam. No desire for any gyan, karma, and or anything yeah. like that. No desire for any um, anything material, any anything like philosophical. Yeah. Gyani, kamardi, and Krishna, and Shilanam, back to Utami. Utama. So, but, but he was saying, but it's, but then, what do you desire? It's not like you become dead stone. No. You know, it's like you think, oh, desire. Pe people say, isn't it? Desires cause suffering. Therefore, you've got to be no, no desires yeah. or meditation as you empty your mind and I everything. You know. Yeah. But he was saying, no, it's not that you become like a dead stone, like a table or a chair. <laughs> but actually, but you, you get, th you fill yourself with. Uh, loving feelings and loving um, desires to to serve Krishna and to um, make the world a better place sort of thing you know? yeah For, uh, yeah we need we need we need to fill our life with these things you know we need to fill our life with loving spiritual relationships yeah do you know what I mean I know what you mean has that been half an hour, Charlie? Oh, cool. We got more time. <laughs> <laughs> Jai, that was quick. That I see. I thought that was some. Like we we talked about 
like some some nectar there, right? Do you think so? Yeah. There's a lot of lonely people out there, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know if we hit on the money. We haven't hit the money. I don't know. If people are listening, they can let us know. When you said you felt lonely, I, f- I felt still, for you, like, you know? Yeah. I still feel lonely. All Do the you time. ever write? I should write. I used to write. You know what helps more. me sometimes, you know, is I just write. If you write everything down on paper, what do you think, Charlie? What helps you when you're feeling lonely? Yeah. Not chocolate, Charlie. I don't know. She's speaking to someone about it. Go close to the mic, Charlie. I d- if I feel lonely, I usually like to speak to someone about it, you know? You like to speak but to someone about it. it's not very nice that you tend to not want to do that when you feel... That's the whole thing with loneliness. It's like a trick, isn't it? It doesn't feel nice and you think, I don't want... It. But if you speak to someone, you just tell them, like you just did, then... I don't know. That's what helps me. Uh-huh, so but it's just not a very nice thing to say. Oh, I'm lonely because you know you don't want to be a Debbie Downer. But if you tell Debbie her, Downer, that's what my mum used to say. Yeah. But if you tell someone like a div- you know who's practicing, powerful. so you go up to someone like a friend, someone you trust, and say like I feel who's really lonely. Who's practicing spiritual life, or or who you can trust, who you can trust. Yeah. <laughs> so what do you do then if someone comes up to you and says, Charlie, I feel really lonely? Well, that's the thing. I don't. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> it helps a lot just to know. get just I to get these feelings out there, you know. I think if someone. Don't you think? Yeah, yeah. That's the problem shared is a problem halved, isn't mm. it? Mm. Nice. Bit of wisdom there from Charlie. We're gonna have a third mic soon. Yeah. It's awesome. Nice. But yeah, for for real, just get those problems out there, churn them. I feel better. Do you? Yeah, I've been telling everyone though. There's a guy, I met a guy in Bristol yesterday <laughs> and he gave me a fiver to do an interview. I just told him I'm lonely on the interview. Uh, well, an interview like he was filming you or something? Yeah, or something. like I didn't tell him I was lonely. I just talked about loneliness as a concept. You know? uh-huh. He's got, I got a fiver. <laughs> and I gave him a book. So then, <laughs> If you feel lonely to do things for someone else. I don't know, that's how I, when I feel lonely, it's because I'm... If you feel lonely, you're selfish. Usually, selfish, yeah. usually if I'm feeling lonely, you it's because you're I'm just, selfish. I'm desiring something. <laughs> it's No, it's not that you're selfish. I just say... Lon- no, that's right, lonely, say it out, Charlie. Loneliness, your loneliness is like... It's quite, not like it's, there's 700 people listening. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, you asked what helps me do something for someone else when you feel lonely, yeah. and then you feel less lonely. I agree. This is what, Do I, something this for Charlie, is what I mean, like. though. That feeling of loneliness comes from um, from having that selfish mentality, being on that in that material mindset, having that material con- consciousness. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm this body. All of my friends are also bodies, and they'll die, and I'll lose the, those people. All my family. So that makes you feel lonely. So, like, to get to do something for other people, to act on that more spiritual platform, surely that would that would help you come out of that. Selfish mentality. Is it selfish to be lonely? <laughs> <laughs> I, we're just shooting ideas, like. Yeah, I mean, it all comes from, you know, well, like we said earlier, we want something outside of ourselves. Mm. You know, you do get like even great sages, and when they're called atmaram, they're called self-satisfied, but that's because they are in touch with. Um, you know, it's called the paramatma, yeah, the paramatma. super within sort of thing. So we are, by nature, we're social beings. It's called Tatasha Shakti. So we're always under the influence of something else. Like if, if if someone's, you know, got some type of energy, we pick up on that and we've got our own type of energy that we give to others. If any feelings of any, like, you know, negative feelings, um, like loneliness or unhappiness or longing, they are ultimately they are because we're like a fish out of water yeah. you know you take the fish out of the sea you give him a nice cigar give him a nice house he needs to be in the ocean swimming and splashing around eternally we are parts of parts and parts of the whole Krishna but we've come into this material world and we're just trying to uh, trying to en- enjoy the material atmosphere that's why yoga that's why yoga is there it means you connect you connect with Krishna yeah. So these and these emotions that you can see how they're dovetailed in the um, 
prayers and meditations of the, the sort of great Bhakti yogis of the past, where they use these emotions in a in a loving mood to to call for help. Yeah. And you get that. You get very, very beautiful love songs that are yeah. sort of capitalizing on these, you know, seemingly negative emotions, but creating something beautiful from them. For sure. And if we can learn to do that with our emotions, just really feel them yeah, yeah. and then use them to create something beautiful. Mm. And creating something beautiful means you see how I can use this, use this emotion in order to inspire me to go further and further into my life's journey. Yeah, there's that saying, isn't it, that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Hmm. So, like, when you are feeling that loneliness, that sort of separation from from Krishna, from yeah, and it, I mean, it's, it's a it's a good way. Like, I feel lonely, and like you say, this is a fish out of water. Like, for the soul to feel lonely, it doesn't feel right. Yeah. Yeah. You say, why do I feel why do I feel lonely? Because mm. you know? I need something, you know. Mm. And that's you know, these are like these are real. You know, these are real needs, you know. If you're hungry, you'll go eat something, you know. Mm. If you're lonely, then you need to go speak to someone. We need to really be in touch with these with these emotions. And how, feeling these things also creates a type of empathy. So you understand, you know, like, oh, that person's lonely over there, you know. And just this, or, hey, how are you doing, sort of thing, you know. Mm. This is, we need to really be in touch with our emotions and have real empathy for others, and then we create a much more sort of yeah. unified, loving society then. For sure, and this is one thing that's been really nice. Now we're back on the streets doing books. You find that people will open up to you. And when, mm. you've, when you've gone through similar things, you can really hear them. You know, when you've, mm. when, you've, when you've felt loneliness, for instance, and someone comes to you saying they're lonely, you know what that's like, you can feel them. And when, when, some, when someone feels like they've been felt, mm. it helps them, you know? Yeah, if they've been... Like, if someone... No, if you know that someone's hearing, yeah, it's like wow, that was a powerful experience, mm. you know. So it's it's like a nice service to be able to give people. Is like, listen, I know it sucks. Yeah. Like, I heard you. You know, hearing's better. They asked. I want to speak to them, but they asked Marilyn Manson. There was this one person listening to his music, and that was at the time when, especially in like the South of America, where they were really against like you know people like Black Sabbath and yeah. Marilyn Manson. Devil worship. And this Marilyn Manson fan. This boy, um, he committed suicide. And they're all blaming Marilyn Manson and having a go. And this one reporter said, what would, you know, this boy, what what would you have said to this boy, you know? And Marilyn Manson said, I wouldn't have said anything. I would have listened. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that was a good answer, you know? All people are saying, oh, you know, you know, what, you know, what do they say? Like, man up and stuff, you know? But to actually be heard... So they say most of the time we're just waiting for our turn to speak rather than actually hearing what people have to say. And if you try reflective listening, like repeat back what someone said to you, then it's powerful because they're like, yeah, they've heard me. You know, you don't need to solve everyone's problems. In fact, that's what they advise in coaching. It's like you don't just jump to solutions. You really repeat back what they've said, really understand where they're coming from. And even and don't instead of just firing back an answer, ask questions who they can go deeper into why they're feeling these things because most people, this is what they, they teach in coaching, most people actually have the tools to solve their own problems. They just need to be coached to find it. So it's like, well, why do you feel this way? What do you think you could do in order to um, uplift your mood? You know, there's different options. What, you know, what stop, what could help you? You know, what sort of um, tools do you think you need? So there's things like that. And then we actually find out, oh, I can solve my own problems. You know, too, I think too often we sort of just try and be like, a, oh, yeah, I, you know, fire back an answer, but we don't really understand each other. Mm. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks for listening, everyone. That was, an odd pod, that was an odd podcast, wasn't it? I think we're in a bit of a funny mood today. Sorry, it's, it's the moon. It's a full moon yesterday. It's a red moon. A powerful full moon. A powerful full moon. Oh, yeah. Mm. Wait, go to the mic, Charlie. This is interesting. Well, no, it's, it's not. It's just that yesterday was a really powerful I thought full so. moon. And loads of people I know were having Kim, weird... Because Kim weird was doing dreams. like a fire... Like a fire sacrifice dance. Oh, really? Wasn't it, Gopi? Where she lives. Yeah. <laughs> loads of people having weird Sign dreams. Sign me up. <laughs> 
like weird dreams strange and stuff. encounters and so it's a strong full moon last I night felt really like bizarre it's if anyone doesn't know charlie charlie's so in tune with with the astrology and the universe and that that if anything's a little bit out of balance charlie's like it a barometer was, for it the it was really <laughs> mad it was it was a strong one it's always yeah <laughs> it's always out of whack we must be in bad times at the minute <laughs> Mm. all right then so we'll see what the astrology is like for the next podcast but those of you who managed to stick around uh thanks for listening i don't i'm not saying everything we say is right you know some of it's just opinions isn't it that could be uh yeah but anyway it's, it's good to share well, when we can start opening up this place a little bit, then we'll have a bit of an audience as well in these podcasts. We can get a bit of reflections. Yeah. So it's not just... Uh, yeah. Two legends. <laughs> Hare Krishna. Shiyadrita Grahar Shivatadi Gurbhattana Vaja Shri Krishna Shetana Prabhuritananda Shiyadrita Grahar Shivatadi Gurbhattana Vaja Shri Krishna Shetana